Hello, Crippen astronauts. This is Miss Ganeem, your art teacher. So we've arrived to week six of art. And for the most part in art class, we've been talking a lot about the element of art we call line. Now we're gonna start introducing more and more of the other elements. Specifically this week, we are going to be talking more about shape, color, as well as line but we're gonna include those together to create a type of art, which we call abstract art. So there's this artist that grew up in the Netherlands. His name is Piet Mondrian. He was born in 1872. He's the artist that our artwork is gonna be inspired by this week. Now Piet Mondrian has a very unique art style. We call it cubism because it involves a lot of lines, shapes that look very geometric, like squares and rectangles. And he also includes some very simple coloring schemes in his paintings. You'll see a lot of primary colors. I mean, he keeps it so simple. And there's always, always a lot of white space or what we call negative space in his artwork. I'm gonna share with you how he came to find his style and you are gonna find that it's really interesting because it wasn't always very abstract. He actually started off as a realist in his paintings. So I'm gonna show you a few of his paintings right now. This is a self-portrait that he made. And a self-portrait is a painting that you make of yourself. Makes sense, right? Self, self-portrait. It's basically like a selfie, but from 200 years ago. And he painted this self-portrait when he was 28. Now let's watch as his style evolves into abstract. This is a landscape of a windmill painting that he used to do. He loved windmills and he loved landscapes. Kind of looks like a photograph, right? Now he completely changes his style as he gets older. And now we delve into the realm of the abstract art. And abstract art is really focused again on shapes, lines, colors, simple you can't even tell what it is sometimes it's almost like it, the artist created it from their mind and it was going to be a mystery to anyone else who saw it so check this out i mean how different is that now here's my personal favorite and i really love the name as well it's called broadway boogie woogie Again, you can see that he uses the primary colors throughout the entire painting and he creates lines using shapes. If you take a closer look, you can mainly see squares and rectangles all aligned to create an art piece that doesn't look like anything in real life. Maybe it looks like Legos, but still, the idea is that it's very, very abstract. Do you think you can now tell the difference between an abstract painting and a realistic one? Ask yourself this question. Does the subject of the painting look real? If not, more than likely, you are looking at an abstract painting. Now, since his death in 1944, his paintings have influenced designers and artists all around the world. That is why we are going to use Piet Mondrian's famous painting composition in red yellow and blue as the inspiration for our artwork this week okay we are going to create this art piece inspired by pa mondrian you will need either a black crayon or a washable marker or a sharpie you don't need all three just pick one of these. You need something that colors in black. You will also need something that colors in red, yellow, and blue. The primary colors make up all the other colors in the world. That means if you see orange or green or purple or any kind of brown or tan or even, even black, like they all come from a combination of these colors. Isn't that awesome? I'm just gonna pick, you know, plain old washable black marker, okay? What we're gonna do, remember, we're trying to get something that looks like this. So just follow along, and your lines don't have to be perfectly straight, okay? Just do your best. If 
you have a ruler, you can use it. But if you don't, just try and draw it as straight as you can. I have a tip for you. And that tip is that if you start from away from you and you pull the line towards you, it'll be straighter that way. Okay, so I'm gonna start over here towards the left. Let me move my crayons out of the way. And I'm going to draw a line. Again, I'm pulling the marker towards me. Again, if your line is not perfectly, perfectly straight, boys and girls, that is really okay. Miskinane does not expect anything perfect in our class. We're just trying our best to be creative. All right, I'll try some more vertical lines over here. Let's see, one right here. And maybe another one right here. Make these two close together. Okay, I think I want one of these to be thicker. So if I want it to be thicker, I can just make another line right there next to it. How about that? Okay, so that's, those are some vertical lines. I'm gonna start making some horizontal lines. Horizontal means a cross. So make one, let's make one right here, one right here. Maybe a little further down, maybe two that are really close to each other. And then one that's a little bit further away. Do you know that I'm making this up in my mind as I go? I did the same thing on my on my example. So even though I'm following my example here, when I made my example, I kind of just went, like I made up my mind about where the lines were gonna be as I drew. So that means I didn't necessarily have a plan ahead of time. Sometimes creativity works out like that. I'm gonna make some lines up here. Made a little oops, went too far. I think I'll just leave it though. I'll put a thick line right here. Did you know that if you use the side of your marker, you can make a thicker line? If you use the tip, it can be a really thin line. I'll make a thin line right here. Okay. And now, I'm gonna go ahead and color this. I'll be using the primary colors and my washable marker in black. So here we go. Now, normally I'd go ahead and put this in time-lapse mode, but I'm getting ready to say something really important about using your crayons. So hang in there and listen up. Sometimes with my crayons, I like to color hard to add more color to the paper. Crayons are made of wax and wax is a type of material that when you apply it to a surface, that means when you push it onto something like a piece of paper, if you push really soft, look how light it is. It almost looks pink because it's blending with the white in the background of the paper. If I push hard, oh boy, there's that red. And guess what happens sometimes when you push hard with a crayon? I already felt it. My crayon actually cracked. The paper's still holding it together, but my crayon inside is broken and that's okay. It just means I was coloring hard and that's okay. Crayons are actually meant to break. Nope, went outside the line there. That's okay, I'll just keep going. Oh, now the paper took it off. All right, so sometimes it gets hard to hold a crayon like this when it's broken. So I just set it aside and I use the other end. 
This is something uh, we learn a lot in art class. We keep using supplies even if it's broken. We just keep going. And if you remember from another video, I told you broken crayons still color. All right. Going in and filling in some of the white spaces that I still see because I want this to be really rich and saturated. I want the color to be strong, not weak. So I'm really using my muscles for this. Okay, so for the rest of the coloring, I'm gonna switch over to time-lapse so the video doesn't take too long. Okay, and the final touch, make sure you sign your name on here. Now, because this is, uh, it doesn't matter the orientation of this art piece, it could be vertical like this or horizontal. If you're wondering, uh, I don't know, Miss Ganame, that doesn't look very finished. I understand. That's how Pierre Mondrian's artwork looked. He had a lot of white space in it. I'm gonna go ahead and turn mine horizontal and sign my name there in the corner. Okay, friends, so this is the final product. For my friends at home, now I want you to go ahead and snap a photo of your P.A. Mondrian masterpiece and submit it in Canvas. For the rest of you all that are sitting right in front of me, listen to the directions I have following this video. I will see everyone next week. Bye-bye.